Well, good morning, folks. Uh, this is Jason Holton, also known as Knox from www.gamebeat.net. That's G A M E B E A T dot net. Uh, you'll have to excuse my appearance. If I have a bed head, well, I just got out of bed. I'm wearing yesterday's clothes. I haven't even hit the shower yet. But I wanted to get this video done while it was fresh on my mind. A lot of people have requested it, and uh, I made mention of it the other day and got even more feedback. So, uh, I've been pretty anxious to get it done. So this video is going to be on power supplies. This is what you're looking at here is a, an Antec uh, Smart Power 350 watt power supply. It's actually a dead power supply or a dying power supply. I've got a whole pile of these in the closet. Uh, this exact same model as a matter of fact. But that's not what the video is about. The video is about power supplies in general and what you want to look for. Um, power supplies, believe it or not, there's hundreds and hundreds of brands out there, but there's only about a dozen actual companies that make power supplies. And uh, the three companies that I recommend the most are number one uh, PC power and cooling uh, that although they are owned by OCZ uh, they are they re they pretty much remain their own separate entity and so don't get that confused with an OCZ power branded power supply because if you buy an OCZ branded power supply you're gonna get crap um, PC power and cooling is pretty much the best of the best of the best I really recommend their uh, uh, silencer series uh, not because they're silent because they're actually far from silent but they're not super noisy either but they're very very they provide very very robust power they last forever and they're like bulletproof so that's my top uh, choice uh, very close second very close would be Corsair branded power supplies. Now Corsair uh, is actually more well known or had been more well known for their memory and it's only uh, within the last few years that they've branched out into other products, namely power supplies. Uh, Corsair now uh, they got such a big a great reaction to their power supply offering that they have branched out and, and have probably a dozen different power supply models all of which are super excellent. Uh, I actually run the Corsair uh, uh, TX750, it's a 750 watt power supply, and my own personal rig, and, and, and it's about, it's almost two years old now, and it has not given me a single problem. Uh, <clears throat> so let me tell you a little bit about Corsair. In fact, I, I, I actually say Corsair is my favorite pick uh, because of the price. Now, if you can afford a PC uh, power and cooling silencer, well then get one, but uh, the Corsair units are just as good and a little bit cheaper, uh, and uh, they have really good build quality. So let me go into a little bit of detail. Um, Corsair's uh, line of power supplies, all of them, all, every single one of them, are based on either uh, Seaconic, which is the uh, top tier manufacturer of power supplies, uh, Channel Well Technologies, which is a little bit less uh, well known and, and normally is a little bit lower quality, but are still very, very good, very good. Uh, and that's who they use is mainly Seasonic and CWT Channel Well Technologies. Well, they don't just have Seasonic or Channel Well build these power supplies for them. What they do is they get the platform, they get the PC boards and and the main components, and they choose their own components so that these power supplies can be rated for uh, whatever their output is, you know, mine's a 750 watt, and uh, they're rated at 50 degrees Celsius, which is very, very hot. Um, whereas, uh, almost every other single, every other power supply manufacturer out there, every other brand is going to have rated to like 35 degrees Celsius or 40, 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, to, to be rated at their peak power or at their normal power output at 50 degrees Celsius is just amazing. 
that's one of the reasons why I like Corsair so much because um, the main killer of power supplies is heat. Uh, I'll take these take these uh, uh, Antec 350 watt Smart Power supplies as an example. Uh, I've got like I said I have a whole closet full of these. Uh, Antec uh, these are actually channel well uh, bills. Uh, this particular model, and Antec had a run, or Channelwell had a run of bad capacitors, bad electrolytic capacitors, and an electrolytic capacitor, you've probably seen them before in looking at components on your motherboard or, or on your video card, and they look like little batteries, they look like little cans, little tin cans, and um, an electrolytic capacitor is f filled with a fluid, um, an electrolyte, and it does kind of act like, you know, they look like little batteries. Well, the, a capacitor kind of acts like a really, really short-term battery. Holds a charge on a really, really short-term basis and a really, really low voltage usually. Well, what happens when these electrolytic capacitors get exposed to heat over long periods of time? Uh, especially if they're poorly made or of poor quality. Uh, they tend to swell up. Uh, lose their capacitance or change sometimes they even increase their capacitance for a short time um, so the capacitance value changes and they end up throwing everything out of whack your power supply ends up putting out the wrong voltage instead of putting out 12 volts it puts out 13 14 or 15 or it goes lower and puts out uh, you know 10 9 or 8 volts and what's going to end up happening is it's either going to well, a good power supply, and these are these are pretty good. They they what they end up doing is shutting themselves off and refusing to power on again. They recognize that there's a problem, and they say, "Hey, we're not going to kill your computer," and and they won't turn themselves on again. Uh, a poorly made power supply, very poorly made. Some of these really cheap twenty dollar ones that you see, uh, will go ahead and fry all your equipment and take everything down in flames with them. Uh, so. That's what these Antec, uh, these Antecs are good build, but they had a run of bad capacitors, and so you see a lot of dead or dying smart power, power supplies, uh, from about four, four and five years ago. That's how old these are. Now, I'm not dissuading any, anybody from buying Antec. Right now, Antec is using Seasonic, uh, for most of their builds, and so Antec power supplies are pretty good, but you end up paying a price premium for them. So, uh, the main lesson to be learned there is don't cheap out on a power supply. Uh, spend a decent amount of money. If you're building a, even a, a mid-level rig, you're going to want to spend at least 70 or 80 bucks on a power supply. Um, if you're building a grandma's PC or just a, a small office home office PC that's not going to be not going to have a, a big fancy 3d card in it it's not going to do any gaming then you can get away with buying a, a $30 power supply if you buy right uh, and, the, and the range of low-end power supply I tend to recommend uh, n number one right now I recommend the Antec uh, basic it's spelled B-A-S-I-Q not BASIC. Uh, it's a 350 watt power supply. Any of the Antec Basic line are really good, but there's a 350 watt power supply that you can get off of Newegg or at Fry's Electronics. You can buy them at several brick and mortar stores for $29.99. Um, it's actually based on a Seasonic build and it's actually very, very good for the price you're paying. Now it's only 350 watts, so you're not going to be able to power you know, a big fancy graphics card, you know, you're not going to be able to power a $400 graphics card with this, but, you know, you can easily power a dual core, you know, a dual, a basic dual core system with a basic video card or on bo onboard video and two or three hard drives even and, you know, optical drive or whatever. Uh, they're, they're fairly robust little power supplies. I actually have an Antec Basic around here somewhere that same model and I can't I don't know what the hell I did with it it's driving me crazy uh, 